it just droops down. It just needs a tummy tuck. Yeah, we are in, in tummy tuck capital of the world. We were sailing south from Miami. That whole time we were waiting for my passport. Almost five months and now the weather has turned unpredictable, stormy, and the wind in our face. We made several tacks southward. Making slow but sure progress in the right direction. And then along the roadside, we dropped anchor and jumped into the water to clean the bottom again. But it started raining and the waves started picking up while we were in the water. I didn't feel that it was raining. We continued on to what we thought would be a well-protected anchorage for the evening. The wind began blowing in the right direction for us to enjoy the protection of the island. However, in the early afternoon, the wind then began spinning all around. Oof, the life jacket's loose. Do you see the life jacket here? Huh? The life jacket's loose. Oh. Ah. Oh. <laughs> that was took a little bit of time. The wind is spinning around in circles. In about 30 seconds, it goes from the north to the south. Without access to the land anywhere nearby, and with a continuing forecast of unpredictable storm clouds, we were out of there. So due to the shitty weather conditions, we've uh, decided to do the inside of the ICW between Angelfish and Fish Creek and, or Angelfish Cut and Long Key. It's supposed to be sketch catch that wise, so this will be pretty much a report for anyone who ever wonders doing it with five feet of draft is possible or not. This is experiment 1.0 of inside passageway. We've been having strong uh, south south easterly winds, that means that that should push water off the lagoon and uh, the extreme rain should have also brought made the water level rise uh, in this area so let's see. Although our mast reaches only a height of about 55 feet, we passed in the center of this 65-foot ICW bridge, which many Navionics users complained about. In Barn Sound, we felt that we were entering a new kind of ICW realm, where any depths could happen at any moment. Our depth sounder is not calibrated to show the depth below our keel or to show the depth at our waterline. It shows from the location of the transducer. At the entrance, depths jumped up to less than six feet. Come on, spin, dolphin, show us the path. See if I use your echo skill. They are going in the middle of our path, like as if that's a good fishing spot. Yeah, that's more like seven feet in the water. 2.5. Last point four. <laughs> Thank you.
We're always keeping an eye out for hurricane holes along the way. This area seemed to have some potential for sure. With an added bonus of access to fuel, fresh water, and ice nearby. Now we concentrated on the next creek coming up. Supposedly an even more shallow entrance with only about five feet of depth. <laughs> tight, 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 tight! I took what says. Blue, green, yellow, whatever, just give me some of that. But we never saw less than 6.5 feet of water there. It's supposed to be like low tide right now, but, it, but according to the manual, it's almost high tide. So the water is higher than normal. I think due to the rain, like it's very low tide. I can see there's like a uh hand. -huh. Yeah. However, nearing the inner lagoon, our anchorage for the night, it became shallow again. And we were reminded that this journey had a barrier to entry for boats with more than five feet of draft. To access the grocery store here at Key Largo, we found the public access at K Drive. And we looked around for another way to get to shore. However, everything else seemed to be private, so no other access. We enjoyed the colorful sunset and knew that we would have to resume our journey in the morning because the water levels were particularly high right now. The extra water from rain and southerly winds pushing into the keys and would not remain there for long. Another charted shallow entry and exit point. And then having some speed is also good because if we touch a little bit, we might to push through before we get caught in. Get some shit, you know what I mean? A passing fellow sailboater gave us the thumbs up when we asked about upcoming depths. You think it's more shallow than the Bahamas? Yeah. Today we were expecting to see less than two meters or less than six feet of depth all day. And of course, that's what we were seeing. We chugged along, ready to turn back sharply at any moment. Honestly, we were just on edge watching the depths jump around as we carefully made our way down the very center of the well-marked channel. Well, it's very clear in here. Yeah, but on Google Earth, you can actually see like a lot of the striations. And... We used all our available resources, including satellite imagery, to determine our path. But dolphins helped to lighten our mood. Notes made by other Navionics users near Tavernier Key were indeed accurate. It is confusing here and shallow all around. Jesus Christ. Still not out of it, huh? That was catch. This is where the ICW gave up, where they 
I guess are like, no, nah, you're on your own now. No more suggested magenta track. And it's wide open. We're seeing depths on our depth sounder of about two meters of water, and that's it. Make your own way. Choose your own adventure. Near Cotton Key, the shallowness became more consistent. Almost exactly five feet of depth, near mid-tide, and the recent torrential rains working with us. So right now we have like, we have less than a foot, like 20 well, centimeters. Yeah, we're the only place technically on this, on, on this chart where we, where we might touch, so. You, okay. don't, you don't see any, any sand being kicked up at the back, no? No. We were now past the uniformly shallow area, but also approaching another pass that could involve shoaling near the entrance and the exit. Seeing a little more depth for now. And one more, one more pass. Well, it looks bad on the chart, but that was it. Finally through. We had passed our test of virtue, measured by our draft. We were not overloaded, not about to get stuck high and dry. We anchored where we thought we would be able to walk Choco on a small beach. But all we found there were the usual uninviting signs telling people like us to f*** off. That's Ixnay on the public access. Access A. Access A. Access A. Access A. How do you say it in, in Latin? Ixnay on the. We explored a little bit with the dinghy and found another small hurricane hole. Mmm. Cheesy omelet. Ravi's got sausages. We have an apple left. The next day, we tried again to find access to the shore. A further dinghy ride away, around the corner, we found the friendly lobster fisherman dock that filled our cooler for under $10 Treasure <laughs> chest, and let us take a stroll on the shore. Oh, we found the grass. At anchor, we were surrounded by what appeared to be all Morgan Out Island sailboats, which we extrapolated must belong to the nearby Boy Scouting sailing group. We can't think of any other reason why there would be so many of the same boats here. The plan for today is to go under the bridge, back into the Hawks Channel, <clears throat> check it out. There was a small craft advisory going on the radio, Channel 16, but we'll, we're going to go check it out. The Hawks Channel has always been fairly decent traveling, especially when we came up back in uh, the winter, and it, it was the flattest sailing place we've ever seen. Got a little protection from its reef lining and yeah we thought it was really easy to sail back then with a slight northerly wind. We'll see how it is today. Go back and in, out into the ocean again. If it's really that bad we can always come back in, come and tuck ourselves back in behind the keys. It's a little shallower to travel to our destination. It's shallower, but nothing as shallow as we've seen in the last couple of days coming down here. There's one last cut left before Marathon, and otherwise it should be all, you know, two meters of water more. So I, I kind of think we should just stick to the inside. <laughs> but we're going to peek our heads out under the bridge. I'm always so thankful to be able to weigh anchor with a fully functioning windlass and swivel. As well as our lucky find here in the US of a used mainsail that fits our mast. We 
We needed to jibe before going in under the Channel 5 bridge. Bridges. They never look as high as they should. We have at least three other sailboats heading north, <laughs> heading the wrong way, bashing against this. Nice, finally getting a nice northeasterly for us to head down. So we're kind of baffled by, by that. But there they go. So that post is still there. Well, it's, it looks like two posts sticking out of the water, but now they've put temporary red buoy next to it. I placed a hazard sign on the Navionics maps and thought it was made public last time we came through here, but the authorities got word of the dangerous posts anyways. We were making great speed and the wind picked up enough that we took down our jib to reduce pressure on the tiller. Uh, placebo effect in my mind. You just gotta be fishing? Just gotta be fishing, just to have a line of the water. Placebo fishing we call it. It was ever so slightly rolly out there. The wind kept on picking up. But we didn't have a worry in the world. We would be arriving in Boot Key soon. Security, security, security. All stations, all stations, all stations. This is United States Coast Guard Sector QS Florida. Coast Guard Sector QS Florida. Coast Guard Sector QS Florida. Time 2333, coordinating universal time 1933 local. The Coast Guard has received a report of a small craft advisory in the vicinity of Hawk Channel from Craig Key to Half Moon Shoal in Gulf Waters north of the Lower Keys and beyond five fathoms, including the Dry Tortugas. East winds near 20 knots. A small craft advisory means that wind speeds of 20 to 33 knots or seas of 7 feet or greater are expected to produce hazardous conditions for small craft. These hazardous conditions may result in poor vessel handling, steering, response, roche, overturn dinghies, and kayaks. Slips and falls on slippery decks, rub damage along decks and seawalls, swamped bows at reef track, mooring balls, and dragging anchors. Inexperienced boaters, especially those of smaller vessels, should avoid operating in these conditions. All mariners are requested to transit the area with caution. This is United States Coast Guard, Sector Kiss, Florida. Out. I love it. There was like almost no seaweed, and I put the line in the water, and all, all of a sudden it's like non stop seaweed. <laughs> Too cute, so it stops me from cleaning up the lines. There's not nearly as much crab or lobster traps around this time, but there's still a couple. There's still one here and there.
Hold on to your butts. Heading into the harbor, we tacked all the way around instead of risking a high-powered jibe this time. This is a great jumping off spot to leave the US. However, the place is completely full. It's been a windy couple of days here in Boot Key. Yeah, maybe about 30 knots, maybe more outside Boot Key. But the anchor's been holding well. We have plenty of space between all the boats. But of course, we woke up this morning, that's too good to be true. And somebody came and anchored right on top of us because it's their spot where they anchor, apparently. And now we were going to have a fairly decent, uh, relaxed day of going to provision, but not so much anymore. Now we're worried about the boats touching. We'd be fine to pick up the anchor and anchor behind this guy, but one of the first words out of his mouth is that he drags all the time. So we're not going to position our boat behind him where there's plenty of room to anchor still. Robbie tried to go and help him anchor behind us, just a couple of meters behind us, and then he has all that space, but then he made up something. He said, oh, I can't anchor, I, uh, uh, my engine's not working, and his engine's on, so I don't know. We're very hesitant to leave the boat. Uh, we've got some fenders out, but yeah, there's, there's no more space in this harbor. Like, we are packed to the brim. This is the one spot where, you know, there's kind of room for a boat or two more, and yeah, don't be like that. <laughs> Our last part of provisioning was to make a stop at the fuel dock for water, fuel, and some ice. But the mistake that we made here was not to check out of the U.S. in the same way that we checked into the U.S. here at the Marathon Airport. We called the Key West Immigration Office as we departed, and they said for us to hurry on over. We'll be closing at 8 p.m. and then closed for the entire weekend after that. So now we were racing to get to Key West before 8 p.m. arrived with two hours to spare. Lady Michelle, Lady Michelle, you're responsible for your wake. I think that's the boat, I think. <laughs> I 
We rushed up the gangway, which we understood to be a free dinghy parking spot, and Robbie ran down the main street to get to the office, while Choco and I explored the waterfront. 